In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the content carousel widget in the all-new Adobe Captivate. In older versions of Adobe Captivate, we did have widgets, sometimes called learning interactions, that were available for us to add to our slides, making it easy to add content where, let's say, you needed a click to reveal or a content carousel. These were tools that we could use. Unfortunately, they weren't very flexible. You couldn't really design the way your learners were going to absorb this material. Uh, certainly, you could chunk it out to deal with issues uh, related to cognitive load. However, you couldn't do things like allow the learner to move forward only once they've selected all the material. So it was kind of limited. With the all-new Adobe Captivate, you have quite a few options to customize the appearance and even control how learners can go through their e-learning course. Let's take a look. To add a carousel widget to one of your slides in the all-new Adobe Captivate, simply click on the Add New Widget icon on the left-hand toolbar and select the carousel widget. Now, just like text blocks and media blocks, obviously a widget is really just a block and you can customize it quite a number of ways. Let's take a look at all the ways that you can customize it. Of course, in this video here, you can take a look at the Adobe Captivate Theme Builder and see how you can customize all the fonts and the choices that are available that make an e-learning course look the way that it does. So check that out when you have a second. So the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is select one of the design options that's available here. Now, don't worry that there's only five. There might be more in future releases of the all-new Adobe Captivate. But um, I'm going to stick with this basic option and show you that there's quite a few ways you can customize this carousel widget. First thing you can do is go into alignment and spacing. Presently, this is set up at 92%. You could change that value if you wanted to create a little extra space around the content. But keep in mind that, remember, we're designing for responsive design. So if you've got a lot of content on the slide on a mobile phone, it might look a little crowded. So consider that. You might want to consider keeping it at 92, giving lots of room for all your material on screen. You also have the ability to adjust the spacing between the content items themselves. So for example, in this case, this slider will adjust the spacing between the heading and the body of the text that's on this particular slide. I'm going to stick with the defaults here. Let's go back to desktop view. Now, right off the bat, I know I'm going to need four items for my particular interaction that I'm building. Uh, you can choose anything up to six. I'd like to let Adobe know that six is not ideal. I think seven, eight, nine, maybe even up to 10 elements. So for a future release, if that's a possibility, I'd like to see up to 10 elements. I typically use a content carousel when I don't have enough slide real estate for click to reveals where I'm going to need buttons for all of the clicks or uh, tabbed content or accordion type content because obviously a carousel only requires the left and right arrows to navigate through the content. Let's scroll down a little bit within our properties inspector and take a look at this components section. So just like text and media blocks, you can turn off any of the components that are a part of this widget. For example, you might want to center the title for this slide. You can do that here. And you can do the same thing for the individual page headings, the body text. Uh, there are choices available for your progress indicators. I'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, also, your alignment for the left and right page arrows. So you could move those to the top or to the bottom or keep them centered. And you can, of course, turn on or off any of these elements here. If you want to do force navigation, I recommend that you use the previous and the next buttons here and uh, perhaps turn off the play bar. You can do that from the TOC and play bar icon on the right hand toolbar here. So while the TOC is off by default, you could turn that on if you wish. But under play bar, 
you can turn off any of the controls that are available to your learners or simply disable the entire play bar, which is what I'm going to do in this case. So now let's add some content to this slide here. We'll get into a little bit more of the settings in a little bit here. But let's start off by putting some text content on all these pages here. So I'm going to start off with page number one, and we're going to paste in the heading for that. And here's the text I have planned for that. You can navigate between all of the pages within the carousel by clicking on this page one, page two, page three, page four items at the bottom of your slide. Your learners won't see this. They'll only see the arrows and of course the indicators here. Um, but this is useful for you as a developer to go in and add your content to all of these pages here. So here's the header for page two and here's the body of text for page number two. Let's go to page three and the text for page number three. And finally, the text for page number four. Okay, so, so far that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna customize the images that are on these pages itself. You could turn the, um, you could turn the images off if you don't wanna use them, or if you've got a lot of text, then you need to accommodate for that. But I'm gonna try and get the images to work for this interaction here. If you look closely, you'll see that there is an icon in the middle of the default image. Uh, and this icon will allow you to replace the image with uh, something of your own selection here. Alternatively, you can right click on the image and select replace image from this context menu that you see here. Now I can choose from the assets, the uh, images that are supplied to you from Adobe, or I can supply my own using the system folder icon here which is what I'm gonna do in this case here. And I'm going to select an image that I've planned for this one here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go on to page two and we will click the icon to replace it for another image here. And we'll choose this one here. I really had this goals thing in mind to be centered on this image. So if you need to do that, if you, if you right click on this and edit image, this will open up the edit image window and allow you to adjust the cropping for this particular image. So I can choose a new cropping that forces the word goals to be centered on that image. That looks a lot better. Let's go to page number three. We'll click on the icon and select system. And we'll choose uh, this image here. And again, I really would prefer to have that at least show all of the calendar. So in this case here, I'll, I'll adjust my crop so that the calendar is kind of front and center for this image there. I think that looks good. Let's go to page four and we'll select the final image for this carousel, which is this gentleman using a device to track his time. And that looks pretty good. So we've already disabled the play bar. Let's click away from the individual items and scroll down a little bit further. There are some appearance settings that you can select. Like for example, if you don't want this background that you see here, which of course is not the slide background, but the widget background. Let me change that back to white here. Uh, you can unselect that and whatever the background is will show through. So if I want to choose a solid background or perhaps maybe um, a linear gradient background, I can certainly do that. And we can choose whether it's from top to bottom, left to right, corner to corner, and that can be whatever you wish it to be. Uh, or you can choose an image background. Let's try going to the asset store and finding an image that might be appropriate for this particular slide here. So that's kind of cool. I like that. And let's go ahead and select our widget again. We'll scroll down. So we've customized the appearance of it here. We can change the appearance of the indicator. I kind of like these little dashes instead of the 
uh, circles and we can in change the color of the unselected one. So maybe the white or maybe a gray color might be more appropriate and that's all good. Down under settings, a couple things I want to point out. As your learners move through this particular interaction, you can change the effect of whether the pages go from left to right, right to left, top to bottom. Uh, these are choices that are available to you. And you can even set it up so that it automatically transitions from page one to page two by itself. And you can set the time between slides. I'm not a big fan of this because, you know, different people need to read this content and uh, everyone has different abilities when it comes to reading. So I prefer to keep this as an interaction that the, the learners can actually interact with. Instead, I do like to have move to next slide when the widget completes. Uh, make sure that's turned on. If you would like to disable the next button until they have viewed all four of the pages here. So I think we're ready to preview this particular widget here. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out about previewing. A lot of people on the forums have been saying things like, oh, I can't uh, find preview next five slides. How preview works in the all new Adobe Captivate is that preview will always start with whatever slide is currently selected. So if you have slide 20 of your 40 slide course, selected, it's going to start on slide 20 and allow you to see the rest of the project. If you want to see the whole project, make sure you select slide one. If you want to preview what you're working on right now, don't worry if that's the slide you've got selected, that's what you'll see right up front. Also, if you'd like to preview what this course looks like on a mobile device, you can click the little three dot icon here and select generate device preview. As long as your mobile device is on the same network as your computer, you'll be able to scan this QR code with your camera phone and uh, open it in a mobile browser and see what it looks like there. Let's just do a normal preview for right now and see how this project looks. Okay, so here we are. You can see that we've got our content carousel. The, the next slide button is disabled. Our indicators here. And by the way, you can, of course, not only navigate through this using the arrows, you can also use the indicator at the bottom. And of course, this will remain disabled until you have visited all of the states of this particular carousel widget. And once you're on the final slide, you can jump to the next slide just by clicking the right arrow, which is now available to you. If you'd like to see what this looks like on a variety of different devices. You can preview it on a tablet. Scrolling will be automatically available, so you don't need to worry about your slide size. If you're on a mobile phone, you might have to scroll more, but again, all that content's available. Gone are those text pop-out icons that everyone hated in earlier editions of Adobe Captivate. And of course, you can see what this looks like even full screen. So this will use the full size of your browser. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.